Hey, welcome to another episode of Seen Anything Good Lately. I'm your host, Atesh, and this is Kendall Vano. With the with the Lucy Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz of the podcasting world, you can figure out who is who, <laughs> and you can post that in the comments if you want. Yeah, or not. That's fine with me. Okay, so are you asking me or am I asking you? Who goes? I'm asking you. You recommended it. Yeah. Hey, Kendall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like I just, I just got something to, I've got to ask you, and it's the first time I've ever asked this question to anyone. Cool. Have you seen anything good lately? No. <laughs> you haven't. No, that's not true. Uh, I've seen um, a, a, spe- a specific episode of Beyond the Veil. Really? Which one? I wonder if it's the same one that I saw. 26, 29. Oh, I saw that same episode. What is um it's a it's a very interesting name. Yeah. Should I should I say what Beyond the Veil is or would you like to? So beyond I'll, I'll give a brief synopsis of what, what Beyond the Veil is. Beyond the Veil is a yeah. So Beyond the Veil is a um, New Zealand anthology, horror anthology series, where it takes stories from different ethnicities um, and focus on, on characters from different ethnicity backgrounds. So we've got episodes um, based, of, based on kind of Maori mythology, um, like a Samoan ghost story. We've got a, a Filipino kind of horror story and I think we've got a few others as well um, and it's kind of, I, I kind of compare it to New Zealand's it's very similar to the Twilight Zone at the start of the episode we've got a host who kind of um, introduces the story that we're about to watch um, and I think that's all we hear all we see of the narrator right or the host we don't yeah. see them at they don't go back to him at the end of the episode or anything like that they kind of just go, they just what they just talk about, or they just give a brief synopsis about what's going to happen in the in the story. So this particular episode is twenty six twenty nine, um, and it's a it's a found footage um, horror story. So the found footage um, subgenre in horror now. Um, you may recognize it from the late 2000s early 2010s it was a very popular genre with the likes of paranormal activity uh, or even even earlier from the 2000s Blair Witch Project Um, and then we had you know stuff like Chronicle Um, I know I know there's more out there but those are like the main the really big ones in the genre and I got major 2000s 2000 late 2000 2010 vibes from this from this found footage uh, episode um so it's about a group of vloggers who are going into this haunted haunted church it's a Samoan church um and they're trying to investigate or they're trying to if you scared kind of like a ghost or like a spiritual presence in the in the in the church. Well, they had mentioned that is is it is it true that they is it true that they did, did the church teleport or something? Or did I get that wrong? That they're like it used to be somewhere else and then they moved it over here in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think they moved it somewhere else. Yeah, they moved like they built a church in the middle of a forest in the middle of nowhere. This uh, the Salmon Church, and I was just like, yeah. And basically, we you know we we fall into like um, it's there's something it's cursed, it's haunted, it's got these you know these um 
you know, very similar elements we've seen tons of times before in these kind of found footage uh, pieces. Um, I think it was interesting having the whole cultural element to it. Yeah, it, and it's something that we haven't, well, I haven't seen a lot in like these found footage movies, you know, it's, it, especially when they're based in America or, you know, it, it's yeah. very, it's one perspective. It's interesting to see another kind of um, take on the uh, yeah. What what yeah. Uh, what are your what are your thoughts on um, found footage? What's your opinion on found footage? Um, I think uh, it's gonna films this story the, the whole. It's interesting to get a, a point of view, um, but you don't get to see the main character's point of view of it. Um, because usually they're the ones that are taking the video or they're the ones that are that are there. So you don't really get to see their emotion. You get to hear their emotion. Oh my god, or ah, or running or in, in, in fear. Um I th I wasn't a huge fan of, of the found footage um movies like when they came out like they uh, the first paranormal activity was was good the second one was okay and then the rest were kind of just the same formula over and over again um i think the only only found footage movie that i really really enjoyed of that period was maybe chronicle but i think the rest were kind of well yeah i, I knew um, you would I, I knew that would be your response <laughs> We've discussed this before, I think. Yeah. Um, I've seen a I've seen a lot of found footage films because I like I went through a stage of just watching tons of horror, and I noticed that for the, the you know for the horror in, like uh, industry or but the, the filmmaking industry for horror, there's a lot of found footage because it's it's cheap to make. It's easy yeah. to format stories with a you know camera uh, yeah. instead of having like, you know. Um, oh, you get a great turnaround in these movies as well. Yeah. Um, I, for one, have seen a lot of found footage films. I've seen a lot of them, and I actually uh, like a, a lot of them. I'm one of the very few people who I've, I think I've seen all of the paranormal films to date. There's a new one that came out, was it early this year or late last year? I think it, I know it was time to blow, but I know it was recently. It's called, I think they say it's called like Kin or Next of Kin or something. So I've, yeah. seen, you know, I've seen all the paranormal films. I actually like the paranormal films because there's a kind of like a, even though it's it's weird that everyone had is like everyone in the entire story is recording from a camera and very all just, connected, right? It's very, yeah, it's all connected, but it's very unnatural for someone to be holding a camera, you know. Yeah, it yeah. just so happens everyone in the neighborhood or who's related is recording everything you know no one normally people don't do that you know it's just it, but the story itself that what i liked about it was the unfolding mystery and mythology you know there's a there's a demonic entity there's a ritual there's a cult so that's why i followed along with paranormal activity um i actually really like the genre um there's a lot of Dinkers, if that makes sense. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of, like you know because like I said, it's cheap. It's easy to make these yeah. kind of shove these out. So there's going to be a lot of these types of films. Um, I think you know, uh, apart from Chronicle, there's also um, there's like two main ones who that I wouldn't say recently came out, but two notable ones that I really enjoyed were um, um, The Visit by M Night Shyamalan. And, oh. and uh, the taking of Deborah Logan. It's where they um they're uh, looking after this um old woman, old this old woman who has um Alzheimer's, and they're trying to record everything as much as they can before her mind completely goes, and then we, it slowly begins to reveal that this grandma is not you know there's something else going on. So it's a really good horror found footage film. So there's a few good ones. Most of them are crap, if not to be rude. But yeah, it's a it's an easy format to like. It's, uh, cash, get your hands. it's an easy cash grab as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. For yeah, the horror, a, horror industry. Yeah. And especially like in like the 
paranormal activity movies in particular, they didn't they didn't have any no name actors as well as well, right? So then you know they're cheaper. You're not you're not hiring like a Brad Pitt or you're not hiring like an Angelina Jolie or or someone you know of that caliber. You're hiring almost no like no name actors. Or like uh, kids coming out of university, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just getting these kids because coming straight fresh from their acting academies and do you want to make the money? Yeah. Do you want to say no? So, well, do you want to be so, in, a, in a movie? It's going to, it's a major film. So I knew, I, I knew you had like a kind of like, and you know, it, it's, it's like, I'm not surprised you have a disdain for them. And I actually, I actually, I actually kind of like them. Some of them are good. I, it just depends on the story. I'm always story first. If you got if you get seen... a of your format of the storytelling, show me your story and I, I'll, I'll forgive the found footageness. You know what I mean? You can do anything with it, that format of having, you know, telling the narrative through someone recording an entire film. I could forgive that if the story is good. But, the in, saying that I, and, but uh, in saying that, I did enjoy this episode. Well, I thought, I thought like it was done really well. Um, it, it's just, and I think it, it worked well because it was such a short piece. Right. If it was maybe a little bit longer, I think it's harder to do. Um, what did I think of it? Did I like it? Oh, are I we talking it. about the found footageness? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Um. Actually, I like I liked it because of the variety, because each anthological episode is so different and unique that you, you almost need a different way of telling a story. Yeah. And so someone had to do the found footage route, and I was like, yeah, I like I like the variety of it. Everyone's going to be telling different stories in different ways. I want at least someone to, you know, even I am like someone who likes found footage. Even I get kind of tired of it. But um, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, um, uh, de deterring me or detracting from the story. Um, I was going to say something, but I completely forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. That's right. You only need to keep, talk keep talking. Until yes, you please. Figure it out. Yeah. So basically, um, we follow these three boys. The, the main gist of the story is we follow these three boys who are YouTubers and they're from university and they're going to film. They're going to go into a Samoan church that's in the middle of nowhere, which is really pretty weird. Um, and they're going to go into this church with a, a former... Um, a former... Huh? Former member, <laughs> yeah. pupil of the church. Her name is Mel. And uh, we so we go into the church, and we find out the strange things are actually happening, and which is weird because that's what they actually went into to do to was to capture footage of um uh, a, a strange occurrences going on in, and then when strange occurrences actually begin, they begin to like you know uh, unravel in themselves. You know what I mean? Um, which is like why are they why are they so surprised that. They went looking for ghosts and found a ghost. Almost as if they was their their, their intentions were not pure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're going to go look for truffles, and you you're surprised you find truffles. You know, yeah. like but like I thought I thought that that was quite weird. Their reaction to how they how they reacted to the situation was kind of and awesome. also they they're horror vloggers, so they seek these things out. Yeah, how, like why are you guys <laughs> like? Shouldn't you guys be running back in there? yeah yeah that was quite yeah their reaction uh and then they were like um so they so they so they go inside something creepy happens they run out of the of the um of the church then they decide to go back into the church because of um they needed uh one of them one of them eggs them on you know we need the footage we because we didn't capture enough so they go in, and basically, uh, well, you know, spoilers. You shouldn't, you know, you can watch it for free on um, TVNZ on demand. But just a spoiler for you guys. So they end up, so they go back inside the second time, and they all end up um, dying. And it's revealed that the girl who was a member of the church who gave them access to the church 
uh, is actually in cahoots with this demonic um, female uh, spirit, you can say, yeah. kind of salmon spirit thing. And they're in cahoots and she's, this young, uh, the girl is actually, something special about her as well, but she's actually feeding this yeah. um, female creature once a month. Yeah. Because she, uh, she says that line, oh, do, you want me to, do you want me to get any more? And the, the yeah. demon is like, no, I'm fine. This, this should be fine for, for the month. So, yeah. So that's what that's the whole story, this whole narrative. What are your thoughts of the, the story itself? I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I, I want to see more stories like this. Like this kind of cultural horror like in, in another in another perspective we always see it in the kind of um american or or, or palangi kind of point of view i love to see it in a in a summer or i know there there are a few but there's not that many no, there isn't. and i think especially with these with like the kind of Samoan um and tongan kind of Stories it kind of it it, it 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 works really well with with the horror. It can work really well with the horror horror genre. So but I really enjoy, that's fine. I really enjoyed this piece a lot. I thought it was really interesting. Even as someone who's not a huge fan of found footage, I thought it was really really interesting. The story was good. The the twist at the end was was fantastic. Is exactly what I what you wanted. Um, I got. Um, I don't know if you've watched this Wellington Paranormal. Right. I got. I kind of got some of that, like that vibe to it, just in terms not not the humor. There wasn't a lot of comedy in this, but I kind of got that vibe of it. Yeah. Which I really enjoyed. I I would I would recommend it if you. It, it's a short watch as well. If you've got nothing to do. I mean, it's a rainy day in Auckland right now. Perfect watch. Oh yeah, it, yeah. It's on. It's for free. It's on TV and yeah. it's on demand, and it's on actual TV, right? Yeah. So they're playing it on. They're playing it weekly, but then the whole series is also on demand as well. So if you don't, if you don't want to watch it weekly, you can watch it all at once. It is, I think, five episodes. So again, it's not not a not a big watch relatively easy to binge. Um, yeah, so I, I highly recommend it. It's a nice little genre piece and it's homegrown, so there's something that we, we both support. Any kind of homegrown watching. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of it, but when there is and there's something good, mm -hmm. we definitely will try and seek it out and recommend it to you guys. So uh, it was um, so it was directed by um, Danny Almour. Mm -hmm. Almour, and it was also written by Danny Almour and Alfred Vott. Willem Voigt. Right. Vot Vot Vot. It's German well, names. I do not know how to, uh, to translate these German names. Um, but anyway, so like, yeah, it's. My thoughts on it was a little bit more. It's funny <laughs> you, you don't like you don't like the uh, you don't like the uh, found footageness of this, but you did enjoy the story. I I I like the found footageness found footageness of it, and I I thought there was a lot that the story. It's also very hard to do in 20, 23 minutes. I honestly didn't. The elements of the story that I liked, I wanted to stay on. Like, I want to stay here, stay here. Don't go anywhere from the story. I want to see, I want to stay here. And, but then they had to like, they had to go somewhere or keep the story going or like in another direction. But if, if 40 for read this, like they could, they could make a movie out of this. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, 23 minutes is hard to make a, you know, a full feature kind of thing. I still kind of, I thought it was, um, you know, it was exciting and fun. That's why I really liked it the most. That, the best thing I like, I could say about it, that I really enjoyed, was it was so much fun. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and you can like, tell when a piece is fun, like to watch yeah. when you're enjoying it, especially like I'm myself. Like, I'm, I'm not a huge too. horror guy. Yeah. I'm not a huge horror guy or found footage guy, but I, I enjoy this. So that kind of is a testament to itself. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, I was like, these are like these these characters, these actors seem to be having fun with these roles. Um the elements of the stories that I really liked were my so my favorite my favorite parts of the of the um of the episode, not film. Um my favorite parts of the episode were with um um everything that was culturally related to the church. And I wanted to get to the bottom of the mystery. What happened to the people that happened? Where, yeah. that, that just, what actually happened? Why did they build the church in the middle of nowhere? Um, it's kind of hinted on a bit. You know what would be interesting? It's not, it's not flushed out. You know what would be interesting? This is a pitch. So if they do a season two, they should do like a, like a, like a documentary or like, you know, like a mockumentary kind of style of like the church and you could do it kind of like a like a 2020 piece or like you know like like you know like a sunday kind of three, like three, like three a university boys went missing at this church uh we are going in to investigate oh well, no not even that you could just investigate the church itself and like why people left and stuff all right okay. i can see like that an, like a like an investigative journalist kind of point of view of it um i thought the um i now i'm getting like into my critique mind of it all i thought that i thought the um the main actors there's so much of it was like um i felt like the kids were acting you know what i mean like it didn't seem like it seemed kind of like out of these are great lines but i think sometimes they required some of the lines weren't landing for me I like so, I don't want to. Well, are you saying more, like they needed a more natural approach of delivery of the lines? Yeah, because it is a found footage kind of. Um, they should. It should be a lot more. Um, it should be a lot more uh, organic. Natural. Yeah. Naturalism to the to the dialogue, and I like I like the you know, the hinting they're putting in like bits and pieces of slang here and there, sort of little, little cultural elements. Yeah. But when when the actors are saying it, it, it's becoming unnatural to their tongue to pronounce. And so I'm like, usually when that when that occurs, you you can change it around so the actor can become so comfortable. Because at a certain point, the lead actor was like, he's reading lines to me, and he's like, uh, like you know, he's all of it, it. It felt like these are kids who are acting. And I can tell when they, I can tell that they're acting. This, the, the, especially the main kid, Max, I think his, his real name. Yeah. Is. And I'm not trying to, you know, throw any shade or anything like that because I literally have no stakes in. But I felt like he had like his acting is so kind of like very commercialized. But then he, it's hard to do because he's a he's a kid. So he's a kid who's an he's a so. He, the actor Max is playing a boy who is a YouTube vlogger who is putting on an act for as a character yeah. in the podcast. So I'm like, this the, the, the multiple layers of that because he's like, uh, he says Kyoto to Fano. I was like, yeah. that seemed very like very stagey, but that adds to his to the fact that he's playing a character in his yeah. own vlog. We're, but where vlogs are traditionally more like this, very just like um, rough cutty and very, um, you know, uh, uh, very kind of um, uncut, unedited, gruff and messy like this. You know, the, the, our dialogue is just like off the cuff. Whereas he's like, but they, they have an actual script where they're looking at the thing. And I'm just like, uh And it, it's- they even, they even talk about the delivery. Oh, can you deliver this like that? Yeah. Can you deliver this line like this? Yeah. So that that's the part where I was just like, uh, maybe that's where I'm getting that from. I'm misconstruing them playing characters in their vlog, 
but it's when the cameras are off where they're still doing it kind of ish you know what i mean they're still kind of they it still kind of comes off as like they're 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 performing a little bit because the words are so unnatural i heard someone one of the actors say something very unnatural i was like you should have just asked the actor how he would how he would say it it was the yeah. part where um Oh, what was that boy's name? The big one, the big guy. I'll look it up. His name is um. Is it the Albert guy? Oh my, I think it's... yeah. There's no person to go with this thing. A foe. His name is on the show. Oh, okay, yeah. So Albert. Uh... It's his acting name. Latea Le Kepa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. Uh, what was I gonna say? There's, oh, there's a there's a there's a scene where he where he's he's giving exposition, and so obviously hey, he's giving exposition. I think because it comes off so randomly and unnatural. I think he says something about like, um, he's like they moved the church here back around this time and they moved the graves i was like why are you telling us this why are you telling no one asked you to <laughs> you should say like and like it's not it's not just how it, it's not just what he was saying is how he was saying it if it's like a there's a line from star wars when george lucas wrote the lines for um the original actors you know um mark hamill and um uh harrison ford and uh what was her name harry fisher Gary Fisher, they used to say you can write this stuff, but you can't read it. I know you can't say it. That's just, that's like, that, that's what they used to say on the original set. That you can read, you can write these lines, but you can't say it. Uh, and basically, what it refers to is the fact that it's so. Um, uh, it sounds so boxy in another person, an actor's voice. Usually, what happens is um, writers like. Um, David Lynch. Is David Lynch or John Lynch? Finch. David Fincher. Yeah, David Fincher, the, the director. David and Lynch is... Yeah, we've spoken yeah. about this, how I keep those names confused all the time. Yeah. And they're both genre guys as well. Yeah. Well, obviously yeah. different, 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 different genres and stuff, but... It's David, easy David, to... David Fincher said that um, if, if that ever occurs, uh, where like... It seems so unnatural. It's difficult for them to, to for them to say it, the line in the script. He says, uh, "Give it to the actors to uh, rewrite it in their own voice, in in the voice that makes it easier." Like I think, uh, Mun Freeman did that on Seven, and you can see the script. And the script says like, uh, you know, uh, it's that scene when they're in the coffee house where his uh, he talks about his his wife left him because he didn't want to have a child in this world. And then you can see the real script and how he read it. And then he told Mon Freeman to like, just, how would you say Morgan, Fr- Morgan Freeman. Morgan, Morgan Freeman. No, Mon Freeman's a bloody English actor. It was like, seven Martin Freeman? He wasn't in that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know what? If they do a reboot, or, or they do, <laughs> you just get Martin Freeman, Martin Freeman doing a Morgan Freeman impersonation. This this episode is off the rails, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry to everyone who put this episode together. But yeah, so they're like, it it, it seems it seems so boxy coming out of his voice, uh, out out um, character, and then um, I feel like I when it comes to the story, I've seen this many times before. You know, uh, we're gonna do like a supernatural vlog thing. Let's go into this um, abandoned hospital, asylum, uh, orphanage house church you know i've seen them all i've seen them all um old folks home school high school children's school that burned down um so i've seen them all and i was just the story for me wasn't it wasn't anything special i had seen this like i've seen this many times it what made it special was that it was the unique cultural uh perspective yeah that's what I, I, was like trying, that. I was trying to get to the bottom of it. I was like, so what happened to the Salmon congregation that, that, that put the church there? What happened to them? Um, 
is there some kind of like there was a hint that they had they had taken the members of this church had taken the the scripture of Leviticus that where the, the episode is named after 26 29 they'd taken that line seriously and had begun uh, uh, some kind of uh, spiritual demonic entity this female figure and they'd begun feeding it and or maybe this they had unleashed this figure and it fed on it fed on the congregation until there was like but there was like that girl um, Mel Mel's character was a spirit who was also could become a human who would lure more people to feed this this entity uh, more um, you know, for, for sustenance to, to survive. Um, yeah. I just want to give a shout out. I really liked them. Um, I really liked them. Um, Mel Mel is my favorite. The actress yeah, who was... played her, her name was Faye Tofilo. Tofilo. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Yeah, Faye, Faye Tofilo. She was my favorite, man. She, yeah, I loved like, it. She was really good. Because they all they're all acting, that guy or like that Max guy. I, I just found them like it, to me those main those main three dudes, except for maybe the guy behind the camera because we got us on. Um yeah. it seemed like they were acting, you know, they're trying to be cool guys, especially the guy uh, Albert. You know, they're just being like, I just like, but that was a role of it. It, it seemed yeah. pretty kind of it seemed kind of for me a little bit campy and goofy-ish. Uh, which is fine because I was I wasn't expecting you know you know, I was like a you know an Oscar award winning yeah you weren't really. expecting like a Daniel Day Lewis performance of yeah. <laughs> I mean it like was, it was fun for the episode that they're in and that's what I got and that, that's what I got um, I thought that there was room for improvement but you know there's you know it's a 20 23 minute episode yeah. of an anthology but I anyway thought was, forget, I thought Mel was fantastic Mel was my favorite she's so <laughs> she plays it so straight yeah and the Got that really I mean, kind of, I mean, you have really to, fobbish accent. Like, yeah, but she's like, I, I feel like I've, I've like met someone's mom who was like this. But she does this great things. Oh, this is like this is this is something I do when I pick up on small gestures and, and stuff. I was about to say the, I was, I was gonna, I was just about to swear there, but I caught myself. Um, she does this great gesture with her hands. If you look, if you, if you watch when you first introduce her, this is Mel. She's on the cover. She's gonna be taking us into the the property and and she's doing her, this thing yeah she puts her hands like and i was like wow that's cool because i looked i looked at them and i looked at her and she's a very kind of um she's playing the straight she's playing the role very straight but even if you put a low energy character like that can be quite big uh, if you know what i mean like because like she, she she plays the character so low energy so there, everyone else is kind of like um, you know, very kind of upbeat, kind of like uh, go get it attitude, blogger mind. Uh, where she's 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 down here with her energy, and she's yeah, she's chewing that scenery, man. She didn't have to do much; she just had to like, it's like, oh, we're going to the, we're going into this church. And said, so, yeah, it's, oh yeah, we're going to my family's in there. They're like, I was just like, she, it is a kind of like a she had a great look. I think uh, I liked, uh, I thought that she had a great, like, very solemn face, very, st very strong eyes. And I was like, and then, and then she, whenever she acts weird, I was like, I, I, I found myself cracking up because I was like, am I the only one noticing that Mel is so weird? I was going to, like, I was like, you need to punch her now. <laughs> she, she, Mel is being so weird. I was like cracking up. I was like, Mel is so like, we need to punch him on the face. Mel, what's like, because the guy, Max, is like, he's like, we need to get out of here. We need to get out of here. We cannot go anywhere. I was like, punch her in the face right there. I was cracking. I was like, punch her in the face. She's being weird. Get out. Like, that's how these movies go. Don't you know that? <laughs> and also, she was very, really, like, she was dressed conserv conserv conservatively yes. as well. Like, so you can kind of tell that that she's she's from that kind of yeah that churchy kind of like you know she was like she's very part of it. like a yeah, conservative kind of like up to the yeah. neck cover yeah. those, you know, your body and skin. I thought that I thought the leather jacket was a bit too much. But then again, that leather jacket must but, have been like a she's like she's young and she's going to go meet young kids. No, but but remember she's not from this time period, right? So like she's it's like 
it's like have you seen you know that meme that 30 rock meme with um steve Buscemi when he's got the um oh, yeah. skateboard and, and and the backwards yeah. hat saying how do you oh what do you know kids or, or whatever yeah, it's yeah. kind of like it's kind of like that like she's trying to fit in yeah but other than that i, I thought her costume thought, was really great yeah i liked it a lot um i hated i uh, to be honest i hated the guy's costumes it, it seemed like they were like hey it's Conan chic <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. wow 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 you know what i thought i was the costume guy that was a that was a low blow man it was more like <laughs> Hey, look, hey, look, look hey, in, in their defense, there was a sale on Helen Steins that day. <laughs> did, I, did I just become like a close snob? Bro, you, dude, you were like, are you like, on like, do you write, do you write for RuPaul's Drag Race right now? Like, you I gonna... wish. I'm free. <laughs> I would love to. Oh, man. Cause like yeah, it, like I don't know who did the the wardrobe because they no, did a like, fine job. They did a fine job with Mel. But and if then you when, think about it, but the guys were like, were like, these are university students. You should be wearing like, I don't know, like go to like go to a go to a thrift store, and get some like I don't know. I don't know. I, I I think that was fine because. I mean, when we were at uni, I wasn't wearing anything like fancy. I still don't wear anything like, <laughs> like I'm not wearing like a Gucci like shirt or anything or like Louis Vuitton socks. But like, I, I think what they were they were dressing like it's probably what they could afford. You know, Helen Signs. Got no, look, got nothing against those stores. But like, yeah, but I, I I think they're dressing. They look like he dressed like like that's how you dress ten year olds. That's how you dress like little kids up. You know, your parents bought that, like, that the main guy. Whoever dressed him was Maybe like, that's that, what... Have you asked? Maybe his mum bought him that shirt and that's his favourite yeah, shirt. I swear, like, that's how, like, kids, like, little kids, like, like my nephew, who's seven, that's how he... No, 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 I take that back. My nephew dresses way better than that guy. But, like... <laughs> when did this become a roast? <laughs> I was just All like... Right, Jeff Ross, take it easy. And then the guy, the Albert's one, I was just like, oh, red hoodie, but like he had red shorts as well. And I was just like, You didn't like the matchingness? Yeah, yeah it's just like whoever you dressed it. You wanted it's a like bit of the, contrast? It, it looks like yeah, like a like a CW production or like a, you know, Power Rangers. No, like CW, use, Power CW Rangers. know how to dress their teenagers <laughs> who are in their mid 40s. <laughs> You're getting worse, you know. <laughs> and, and then their parents in the show are like three years older than them. <laughs> yeah, oh God, that's so true. Because <laughs> I would, I always, I, I, I use this as a reference. Flash, right? Right. The dad looks like a couple years older than the kids. It doesn't make sense. Oh man. It right, doesn't but, make yeah. sense. Cast uh, to their age. <laughs> they, um, also, their, their parents are way too good looking. Yeah, those parents are way too good looking. Like, they look like TV actors. Like, like in a couple of years, I'll probably be of age of where I could play someone's dad. Cast me. I'm, I could be someone's dad. <laughs> But yeah, we'll go we'll, going back to the episode. Yeah, yeah going like, back to the roast. Yeah, going back to the roast. Like the kid, he just he, like he looked like a like a like an Archie character. You know what I mean? Like from yeah, but not not not, not the river, not Riverdale. I'm talking about the actual yeah. <laughs> the actual comic book with Archie. <laughs> like he's like he's gonna wear like he's wearing his like skinny jeans with like like uh, those kind of like um, sneakers and. He's got that, uh, what's like a crew neck thing with like green uh, sleeves? I don't know. I think, I think the dress, I think the dressing is how like, how a, a, a boy that age would dress. I, I think I they dress, I don't like it, but I, yeah. but I can see like, I've seen a lot of, uh, 
It looks like a warehouse catalog. Whoa. There, I said it. I said it. <laughs> it's out there. Now it I look like my now I look I just lost my job at RuPaul's drag race <laughs> to you. It looked like it looked like a warehouse catalog, and no one should be dressing like, like, like that. Jesus! I was gonna say they dress like a Posty Plus catalog. Yeah, they, they do. <laughs> We're not wrong. We're not wrong. Like it's just like they're trying to make it very like. Most found footage is supposed to be very naturalistic and stuff like that. Like very kind of like you know um gorilla kind of just like a couple guys recording something like that like us but it's quite clear that those are costumes because they're, they're so like pristine and and childish almost like immature looking clothes on them and it just kind of took me out except for bloody um mel who they got right i like how they did, did their hair yeah it was I, li- I like the long but like um, they Thing. Yeah, so she got like a, um, she got, she got like a great scenes. She had, she had, she had yeah, she got so to, like, like praying she got to, at and she's like closing she her to, eyes. She got to eat, man. She got to eat. Yeah, she got to eat. The scene, of course, the scene, and she's not actually yeah. eating anything. But no, like, there's a great scene where she has this, um, she's like looking up and she's just slow, like, there's some good nuance acting right there. She eat, on her cheek. There's a scar. Did you see it? There's a scar, and she. I was like, "That's, that's a good like, look closer. Like, what what can you see?" And I and I saw it. I was like, "She's got like just great features." And then she closes her eyes, and then she starts acting weird again. And I was like, "We need to punch her in the face, <laughs> punch Mel in the face." I was like, "Stop being weird." Like that's exactly what I would do. I was like, "Why are you not? <laughs> Why is she?" She's like, the, "The the children they're singing to me." I was like. Now get over here. <laughs> now get over here right now. I'm leaving right now. I'm put you in the face, Mel. Cool. Any final I thoughts on? I can don't know um, um, yeah, violence. But, of course not. Um, but hold on, hold on real quickly. I just want to... Um, what, what were your thoughts on the creature? Oh, the... The creature. The look of it or the um, idea of it? The design, the idea. I think a lot of the budget went on to the on the demon. <laughs> like like but understandably as well. Like Yeah, it's like, twenty minutes for yeah. an anthology TV show. And I can't imagine it having like a massive budget for it. I can't imagine it having like ten million like we expect on like a Star Wars or Game of Thrones. Can I can but, I say that um uh, I actually liked the digital effects? Yeah, I liked it. I thought it was really cool. That's why I'm saying like a lot it. of it. I, I, that's what I'm saying. A lot of it, we, a lot of the budget looked like it went to the demon. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I really like the digital effects, especially the scenes where they're looking up and it's up from the 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 cave underneath. I was like, yeah. I, I try to say basement. He keeps on saying cave, and I was like, there's no there caves under these churches. It's a basement though. He's like, well, it's some kind of cave. I was like, dude, it's a basement. Anyway, they're looking up, and there's a hole in the floor. And there's, it's so obviously they've imposed another shot looking up at those two um, actors and then another shot looking down and they compose them together. I was like, um, I actually like that they, it's, it's so obvious that they're, you know, it's super obvious that the, um, the perspective is off. However, I like that stuff. Like in the, the digital flies flying over the, um, the goat's head. I like that stuff. Yeah, and the certain digital elements where they're putting um, <laughs> they're putting um, was it was a foe or something? Four, what's yeah. the boy's name? Yeah, Fo. Oh, oh yeah, I. <laughs> there's a there's a there's a digital version of the the D, the demoness. Let's call her the demoness. There's a there's a version of her, and she's um, her mouth is stretched open and devouring uh, for this is not the first thing that came into my mind is. That is a heavy boy. That is a heavy boy. And you, you put me that guy into your mouth. I was like, I cracked up because I was like, she's like making him look like she's like light. And I was like, are we forgetting how big this guy is? And because like he they they rescue him, they slam the door, and then she grabs him again. And also, slides. we don't condone body shaming, by the way. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not blowing his name. Yeah, that's my family right there. But like they, he's like he's getting grabbed and pulled away, and I was like, that dude is heavy. How strong is this uh, this demoness chick? I mean, demons are strong. Anyway, I thought that I thought that was funny that they chose the big guy. Uh, second of all, uh, we'll go back to what I was saying before. Uh, I like I like how rough the digital effects are. I like that stuff because you. I think you and I like uh, growing up watching all those like. Um, Star Trek and Doctor Who episodes, it's all like this. They all look like this. I love how hokey it is because I, I find it, it's very quaint. I mean, you know, yeah. it's not about the digital effects. It's about conveying the story. Yeah. And like the, the special effects is almost like the side thing. So it's like, to me, the story is like your main meal, right? So this is your, this is your chicken, your steak or whatever. And then, like, to me, the special effects is almost like a side dish, like yeah. your salad or your, like, little macaroni and cheese on the side. And then, but the meal is what you want. And, like, okay, like, I can have some some salad with my chicken. No, yeah. So, yeah, we're both on the same page about that. That, like, it really wasn't the main, uh, you know, but I, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the design, you're right. A lot of the design went into the, um, the demon. Uh, the I mean, you had to though, right? You had to, right? Yeah, you had to. Because this, yeah. this is the build-up. It's the build-up yeah. to the climax. We want to see the demoness that's clearly played by a man. Yeah. If uh, we didn't if we didn't have that, then it would just it'd just be kind of lousy. Yeah. Like it'd be kind of lazy. I like the demoness. I wish I knew what the uh mythology was behind this you, creature. You want a little bit more backstory, right? Yeah. Or maybe it's better that we don't know. You know? That ambiguity can be even more enticing than the actual, you know, origin story of the demoness in this church. Um, I thought the idea of this kind of ghost, um, ghost Mel, where she plays her a younger self. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is this? She turns around, turns into a younger version of it. I was like, now you've even added more to the story because I don't you, know what. Yeah. This you this it adds more suspense. Yeah. I'll, I'll say more intrigue because I want to. I want to get to the bottom of it. Uh, and then the demoness gives her a flower, says thank you, and then the the demoness um, proceeds to grab the the other boy, and then they just drag them off. And then you know what? So a, so a specific person that I was with, I was watching it with, said to me, "That is really cute." <laughs> they they said they said ah because it's a cute little girl, <laughs> this big demonic um, demoness, and they just kind of like, let's get back. To bed or something. Like, let's go yeah. do all that, and they just walk off. It's very. It's almost like it's like you know, like a like a mother and daughter or a father and daughter kind of thing. You know, like okay, like you got you got me dinner. Oh, let's, let's let's go. It is cute. It is like a cute. It's a cute scene, right? You know what I'm talking about. You saw it. Did you think that ending scene was cute because they walk off? I, I, you know what? I, I I kind of when I was watching like. Ah, this is like nice. I mean, they devoured someone, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just disavowed uh, this young boy, but uh, uh, you know, there's a happy ending in there. You know what I, I mean, mean? For the demon, sure. But not for the... <laughs> it's cute, right? It's cute. It's weird, but it's cute. Um, yeah. So your your final thoughts? It was good. I recommend it. Um, of, of course, it has has its flaws. Everything does. But I would recommend it, if, especially if you want a genre piece, a nice little horror short short film, I guess. Yeah. And um, I recommend it. I, um, I, I uh, actually, um, in the larger scheme of the entire series, I would recommend watching it just to complete the, the you know, the whole anthology. <laughs> um, I'm not hugely into it, um, except for if you want to, like, if you want to see a, if you want to see a story or a piece that's trying its own, like its own space to tell a genre piece with a, a hint of like um, a Samoan culture or some kind of like Pacific mythology interweaved into the kind of uh, the horror um, uh, piece of it all, I'd give this like yeah, this is a textbook. So what you need, what you need to look at. Um, I would recommend that people watch it. Just to see, uh, what was her name? Faye. I think Faye, for me, sold it to me. I was like, 
apart from because I love you know you know we're genre people. I love the supernatural element. I like the, the look of the demoness. I like the Samoan um, you know angle of it. But I thought the takeaway was this um, Faye Tofilo. Yeah, this Faye actress who plays Mel. I would I would recommend you watch it just to see her performance because like it's 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 under, it's it's uh it's unassuming and it's not like she got all it's not like she was in it for like most of it she was in it for like maybe yeah two thirds i'd say and what she was able to do with it but like it's very subtle acting and i like that the, the, the hand you going back to the hand gesture her the way she she's uh, the way she was speaking was like i like it's some like i'd met a kind of woman like her before like a, like a, she seems she seems familiar, right? Like she seems older, like an older soul in a younger person's body. Uh, I liked her pronunciation of her, her accent. Mm. Uh, just certain looks or glances with her eyes. She's very uncomfortable to be around. Very kind of composed and kind of something unsettling about her. Yeah, she's got like the shining twin vibes to her. Yeah, she does. She does. Yeah, she does. She does have like a um, like she has like um, what's it called? The Shining, you know, like, uh, like she's very, un- yeah, very Red uncanny. Rum. Red Rum. <laughs> she's very uncanny acting. I was like, yeah, I, I, I would recommend watching it just to see her performance because there's really is, you know, I, and hopefully I want to see more of her, you know. I think we will. I think yeah. we will. Cool. So that sounds, that's what we thought about Beyond the Veil, 26, 29. 26, 29. 26? <laughs> there was a new girl reference. Oh, was it? <laughs> she meant to say 29? 29? Why would you say that? I think he was he's about to do, turn 30. And he's like, 29? Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. That's us. Who who are we though? We're, no, we're about to turn 20. What was it? 30 soon. I'm 30 soon. We'll see like next year. 30, 30. 29. <laughs> 29. You got to throw your okay. hands up. That's what What's, next on 29? The, What's next on the, uh, the agenda? Cool. So Marvel just dropped a couple of days ago the Miss Marvel trailer. What did you think? Have you seen it firstly? Yes, yes, I've seen it. <laughs> um, cool. I thought, yeah, like I, I mentioned this to you before, um, I, it, there wasn't enough for me to um, sink my teeth into. Um, it, was very, it, it was a teaser trailer. It was and a it teaser trailer. It teased us. It teased yeah, us all right. <laughs> it teased uh, me all right. Okay, stop doing that. It's, it's about a little small What do you girl. mean? It really teased me. <laughs> okay, stop. But no, oh, yeah, God, little... but I teased. <laughs> you cut it out. There's, there was enough, like, uh, there was enough to chew on. Yeah. Like, like uh, there, were, there were hints of the quantum band. They changed her powers completely. Yeah. Using the quantum bands now and instead of her um, stretching powers, which makes sense because you would have to involve... The humans Terrigen mist to uh um, to abilities. Not just that, they're gonna introduce the Fantastic Four at some point very shortly, right? So <laughs> who's got who's got stretchy powers? Mr. F. Um, so like obviously they're not gonna they don't want like too many characters. I mean in the comics it works, but like in in mo- when they do movies and TV shows, I, I guess they don't they don't wanna confuse the audience or, or something but i reckon they could still pull it off but also it's it's hard to pull off the stretchiness like in terms of the look of it sometimes yeah. it can look really hokey even in the josh trank um fantastic four movie they didn't really play around with um the stretchiness of mr fantastic that much but in the um mid mid 2000s fantastic four yeah they played they, they did that a lot and it looked not the best. Obviously, the technology isn't where it is now. But for the time, it looked, I thought it looked okay. 
I haven't, yeah. I haven't gone back to it recently, but I, I thought it looked okay then. I th- I th- honestly, I thought it was serviceable. Like, I, I didn't mind it. I think the issue was you got to, like, pay for that um, digital effects time. So every time he's using special effects, or every time he, um, he's stretching, you're costing the studio money. Um, I mean, but Marvel's good for it. Oh, yeah, I mean, back then. Ma- 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Marvel was really- good for it then. Um... That's it. Yeah, that's a good point. I thought I thought that's a good idea. I never really liked her powers being um, stretching. Um, I, I, I loved it. I thought it was cool because she in the comics. If you don't know, she's a shapeshifter, and also it's important to know that she's a relatively new Marvel character. Yeah. She only came out what within the last seven or eight years. Yeah, we we, we picked up a book, right? We picked up a book when we were both at yeah. university. <laughs> and I I, lo- I loved it a lot. It's no, I'm, I'm not shy of that. I'm a huge Miss Marvel fan. Um, I, d- especially... I dug it. No, yeah, I, I dug it as well because I was like, it, it really is. She's the, um, she's, she's Peter like Parker of this generation. Yeah, yes, yeah, she's the Peter Parker of our generation. That's why I really liked about it. You know, Peter Parker has to grow up at some point. Yeah, and you get this young girl who's who doesn't have her life together, who has family yeah. issues, and and like, and I, like it, I like how they bring the Muslim, the, the her, her faith into it. Yeah. Her kind of family struggle, That's like funny, I want to be a super, I want to be a superhero, but I also want to like be supportive to my my parents and yeah, um, and be a, uh, American as well. Yeah. Also, got what does it mean to be American for her? Also, synergy within the whole Disney thing. Turning Red has a similar kind of storyline to that, which I highly recommend. Watch Turning Red; it's fantastic. It's a Pixar movie. <laughs> I'll put, it to, I'll put it on my list of things to watch. Definitely, definitely watch it. It's, it's really cute. It's adorable. It's fun. Um, and if you grew up in the early 2000s, that's when the movie set, like 2002, then you'll appreciate like the kind of, the, the music, it's like 90s, early 2000s boy bands and watch it. But anyway, back to Miss Marvel. <laughs> Hey, it's I, all synergy, man. It's all, it's all in the same I, company, man. Sounds like I wasn't excited for the the Marvels. Until... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not excited for the Marvels. Even this I, hasn't really excited me for the Marvels. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for Miss Marvel, but not for the Marvels. I think it's Captain Marvel that I'm. I don't yeah, really gel with. The Marvel we have issues with, like it's yeah, yeah. the whole Brie Larson thing has become quite a an, uh, a topic of. Um, discussion uh yeah. i thought um but i like I'm, i like monica rambeau i've always liked uh when back when she was photon she was photon back in the day i like i always liked her i've always been a huge um uh photon fan uh and then i like that it's it's um back when um so rick in the comic books rick jones used to be um Used to be, um, he used to be like the the Avengers sidekick, and he had the quantum bands. The quantum bands, for anyone who doesn't know, used to belong to, uh, uh, I believe it was like uh, to uh, another being, an alien being called Quasar. And when you clean them together, Quasar was also in. Was he in the Guardians too? Do they have a Quasar? No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe I'm getting confused with Taserface. No, yeah, yeah, that's Taser Face. Quasar, someone else. Um, so he was like a hero, and he's basically um, he's spoken to by this other entity, who's like a, a like a moss face, and he basically um, is like a floating consciousness, and he's like tells him what to do. He's like mental or whatever. I forgot what his name was. Anyway, when you cling the bands together, your body, your physical form switches places with uh, with the Quasar, and you. Uh, Rick Jones is no longer there. It's Quasar. It's a switch of um, different people, basically, to so different realms. And they're doing something similar with this. She doesn't have a stretching powers, but mm. I like the, how there was a little. There's a little uh, oh. homage, a homage to her powers when she Perfect. she can, yeah, she can project light. Basically, yeah. she can project light from um, constructs, and she turned it into. Um, she turned a giant, like she created a giant fist construct, which is what she used to do all, all the time in her comic book uh, a version of her story. Um, 
So uh, yeah, so there, there, there is something to chew into into this trailer, uh, but not enough yet. I like the hints of um. So should I bring up the thing that we were discussing before, or do we have enough time for that? Yeah, we can discuss it. I will we'll quickly jump into it now about like. These Quasar bands, we've noticed that they look like, well, for me, I've noticed that they look kind of like um, almost uh, culturally designed, like almost like maybe something like from an Indian or Pakistani yeah, like, design. And I got like 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 Indian kind of Pakistani kind of like like these bangle things, right? Yeah, the bangles, the, the, or, the ornamentation on it, the little details. I was like, this is like, because they don't look like it's a quantum bands. They look roughly like that in the comic book, but like they don't have that kind of crenellation detailing artwork on it. And so you and me were just talking and we're discussing that. Where did she get it from? You mentioned that um, does it have some? Does it come from like was it, is it are they connected to? Um, I I have a feeling. Rings? I have a feeling that it's connected to the Ten Rings. Yes, I have a feeling yeah, that it's connected to Shang Chi because at the end of Shang Chi, we have a post credit scene with Hulk and our girl Brie Larson, um, Wong's like, oh, I need a, th th that's not alien technology or anything. We, we don't know what this is. It's ancient, but we don't know what it is. And we need to investigate it more. It'd be cool if Wong, you know, was in the series as well, like as a you know, cameo or whatever, because he seems to be kind of- The one like, closest to solving yeah. where do these artifacts come from? And yeah, then it, you, so you mentioned that you mentioned that they are uh, connected to um, they maybe well, some kind of connection between rings from Shang Chi yeah. and the Qua the Quasar bands. That's my Bangle. theory. My There's theory a that is and then I added on top of that, what if uh, Festos from Eternals created these weapons or created these artifacts, and that's why they they look like the um, the cultural uh, designs that they are in. So like the 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 um the tin rings look like a traditional Chinese tin rings. Yeah. Other mean the rings that they wear, and then the the bangles look like something from you know the, from their culture, just slightly designed, tweaked. And what's and then we and then you and I were talking about of um, what's his name? The comedian. Kumail Nanjani. Yeah, Kumail uh, Nanjani. What's if he? They were like they were made for him at a certain point, for someone who actually is from Pakistan. And he can, uh, you know, maybe even, you know, bump into like, because he's a, he's a, doesn't he turn into like a Bollywood actor? And in that world? It, yeah, because I like, would, she, I would love I if can... the, the mom or the dad is watching him. Yes, yes. The TV in the corner of the house. Yes. And then I'm like, it all connects. Or, or they're like watching an interview that he's doing, like promoting yeah. something. And like yeah. just in the background, like there might be, it might be like a YouTube or audio, you know, like some sort of interview. And it's, it's just in the background. That would connect the world so much. And plus, I can't see them doing an internal movie anytime soon. I, I like the internal. Oh, yeah. Like, but I, I just don't see them, like, in terms of the site that they got right now. Yeah. They, they haven't yeah, announced probably. anything. And it's going to be, it's going to be a while till we get an internal move, a, a second one anyway. I think we're going to see them pop up in, in other stuff. But I don't think we're going to get an internal movie anytime soon. I think we're going to get a Fantastic Four movie before we get an internal movie. Fair enough. Fingers so anyway, crossed. Those are on the Quasar bands and Miss Marvel. I can't wait to see the Marvels. You, you can, you can wait to see the Marvels. I can't wait. I'm excited to. See, I'm just to see like I used to. You know, in the comic books, they used to be. You know, they used to meet up with each other. There was Captain Marvel, and uh, there was um, Quasar. And um, oh, what's her name? Photon. And they, you know, they all get their powers from the same source, which is the Kree. Uh, on except for maybe um, Miss Marvel, but I always wanted them to meet each other. I, w I wonder. Also, the the other the other thing that this trailer kind of introduces is how famous the Avengers are, like how, and also right. in, in terms of um, how famous is Miss Marvel. Because she must be pretty big for them to, you know, for for a character to base, to you know, base her whole life off. You know what I mean? Like base her superhero ness off. I think in their universe, word must have gotten around. Yeah, that there must there must have been like because also the one who who was at the big fight with yeah. Thanos at the Avengers compound. 
she was holding up uh, up against him. And also, like, in Far From Home, there's like those documentaries about, like, you know, what happened at the snap. There's, like, a Wakanda documentary. There was a, I think there was a documentary about, um, who was the, who was the scientist guy in the Thor movies? Uh, Eric uh, Selvig? Yeah. I think there was, like, a documentary or something about him as well. So, like, there must be some sort of, like, like, they must know something. And maybe yeah, she was helping in between the five years of the snap. Maybe she was helping helping them out on Earth as well. Uh, yes. And also, Good. one more thing that I just want to note before we wrap this up: Kamala Khan's wearing a a shirt and it's got Captain Marvel, Wasp, and someone who's new into this in the Marvel universe, Kate Bishop. Was that Kate Bishop? Yeah, it was Kate Bishop. I thought it was um, what's her name, Valkyrie? No, it was Kate Bishop. So this this uh, this makes me ask uh, uh, makes me ask this question: When is the set? Because it must be set, you know, a year or maybe six months. It must be like there must be some time between Hawkeye and yeah, after, um, Hawkeye. Because it doesn't seem like how how publicized was the whole Hawkeye fight and stuff then. I mean, yeah, it was it wasn't a very public it was a very public um, yeah. display. But also, like all those all those women on her shirt are Avengers. Well, it seems like Wasp is an Avenger, I guess. Now with the whole fighting Thanos thing, Captain Marvel definitely an Avenger. Where does this fit in for? Um, Kate Bishop. Do you think they're teasing the Young Avengers? Oh, yeah. Mm, is that, oh, that's, yeah. What that's what you're getting at. Oh, okay. yeah. Should we uh, wrap it up? Wrap it up, Dean. Yep. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in again, guys, uh, for another more of our fantastic rambling. Um, uh, thank you for enjoying our, um, you know, uh, our episode today on... Um, uh, Beyond the Veil, uh, 2629. And we'll catch you guys um, same place, same time next week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, follow us on Instagram, message us, comment, yeah, follow us whatever. on Instagram, Go draw on. pictures of us, yeah. send it to our account, you know, yeah. give us some fan art. Yeah. And we're on SoundCloud too, so you can give us a listen. All right, thanks everyone. See you next week. Well, see ya.